In 55, I got to Hawaii. I got off the plane and knew I was home. In a sense, I was self-taught. I never saw anybody do the things I did until much later. One day, I just shot my arm out ahead and sort of rolled on my back and it made all the difference in the world. Mark is legendary. He's the guy, when you think of body surfing, he's, he's the man. The guy's tremendously talented, and he's probably put in more time than any of us, you know, combined. He's got so much experience, and he's just like on such another level, like a 10th degree black belt, you know? He's a master at what he does, but he's gone beyond that. Mid-70s, late-70s is when I first moved out to the North Shore and started living in lifeguarding out there. Part of the attraction of body surfing was how it worked hand-in-hand -in -hand with the lifeguarding. It was an essential skill, especially out at the North Shore. It just seemed so real and genuine, and it was just very pure and simple, and it was as tight with nature as I could possibly get. You know, obviously the Polynesians being surrounded by the Pacific Ocean, the ocean was their livelihood. It was in their lifeblood. Hawaiian showed me that it's not always about the biggest wave or a huge barrel. It's just about being in the ocean and having fun. Queen Panic is without doubt one of my favorite waves in the world. It's kind of a high performance, bust out all your tricks and maneuvers kind of wave. There's so many great wave riders at Point Panic in Sandy Beach and they're there every day. 
They're not looking for the limelight or contest results. They're just loving their waves there. And I just love body surfing with the boys out there. It's got a really good crew. My family actually grew up surfing over here back in the 60s. I used to come out here when I was young. Never even have this park. This place was all rubbish. Broken cars and stuff like that. We was already coming out here. This, this is what we was about. So I, I got attached to here. And when they made this place on body surfing spot only, I mean, why not? You know what I mean? We got this place to ourselves, man. Actually, it was just from the boys. The boys pushing out of boys. You know what I mean? We all hang out at the tree up in the front. I mean, you know, we was in the water since we was young. So we kind of self-taught ourselves. And just the boys pushing, pushing each other for good surf and do better things in the water, you know. Uh, Barry Holt, you know, like Kaleo, Kaleo them, all the local boys out here, they're killing it, man. And a lot of people don't see, don't see the, the local boys out here on this side. We're we from the South Shore, you know what I mean? So a lot of the people see what's going on on the North Shore. You're on the South Shore now, buddy. in a while she break maybe halfway across the channel dumpy dumpy i mean if nobody really get for see this place this place is firing when it's big firing
The thing I hate the most about body surfing is how body surfers are at the bottom of the rung. It's the worst. I wish you could reverse it and put body surfing on top for a, a month. When you paddle out to a lineup, you're pretty much off the radar. You're trying to get scraps, you know? You got like six-year-old kids, you know, trying to drop in on you and stuff, and it's like they don't even see you. It's like you're just, you're just non-existent. I mean, it's good to cultivate that humility, but at the same time, it's like, geez, you know, I've been, I've been wave riding for 40 years, longer than you've been alive, you know? <laughs> it's like, you gotta deal with it. There's a lot of guys that take body surfing seriously, and it's just a goofy sport, you know? It's never gonna be cool. You know, I never got any chicks body surfing, that's for sure. Surfing is cooler than body surfing. <laughs> so, you know, let it be as popular as it shall be. Body surfing alone itself, it's, it's a lost, like a, a lost art, I'd say. They don't get really recognized for that. There's no body surfing magazine. Surfing has like 50 magazines. You have Japanese versions, Australian versions, and longboarder. It's frustrating, but at the same time, I kind of like it that it's underground. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would like it if it was blown up like board surfing. Just the essence of body surfing has sort of escaped all that because there is no future in body surfing as a career. I mean, come on.
Well, my buddy grew up on Miramar Street, two streets back, and he could feel it shaking at night when you're sitting in his house. You could feel the energy. The wedge just hits really, really hard. It goes from really deep to really shallow super quickly. One foot to, you know, 30 foot. The barrel's kind of inevitable. You're at the top of the lip and you free fall that 15, 18, maybe 20 feet on a big day and you're skipping. I mean, you're like a stone across the water until you start to come in contact with the bottom. Look at my tongue. You see how it's like fucked up right there? That was a ankle, chin, or knee to chin and I bit off the end of my tongue. If you do try to punch out, a lot of times you do, you'll get hit, suck, boom. It's empty, it's huge, it's straight up and down, you can get in it, it stays hollow, and you can go all the way down to the end until it pays off. You could do everything right, and at the end of it, it'll just hammer you. The people who body surf wedge are weird people, because the wave is a weird wave. The hardest part is making up my mind to take off. Actually put myself in the path of the bull and pass it so it rips my clothes but doesn't kill me. We should all be dead. <laughs> That's what Bottom line is I can't believe I'm still alive. <laughs>
Mike is the world's best wave rider, with or without a board. His style is very aggressive and progressive, I'd say. I don't think he's human, actually. I think he's semi-part alien, like, water creature. Blown away at some of the stuff he does. I mean, I try and convert it out here, some of the, you know, off the lip type stuff, but I can never quite get it as good as him, and he's spectacular. This is a river. These drops are going to form with other drops and meander through these rocks and form rivulets and then streams and then tributaries and go through high alpine lakes. In a couple days, I'll be swimming in it with trout. Montana has less than a million people in the whole state. It's half the size of Texas. It's got gigantic mountain ranges and beautiful, clean rivers. You know, this gives me kind of everything I need. Part of this whole thing started with a little quirky obsession I had with uh, looking at fish. Started off with just a mask and fins, kind of a snorkel, swimming in the rivers, kind of seeing what trout were doing then soon realized that if you really want to go where they were, you need to have like knee pads and helmet. And then the snorkel is no good because if you kept your head down, you'd run into rocks head first. That got me in kind of fast water, realizing that there's a whole thing you can do like a fish, you know, where you use the eddies to eddy out and you swim down through rapids and all that. And then it's sort of just a natural progression where I started swimming rapids and feeling what that was like. And then one day I just looked over and saw a little Little wave. Running fast, running faster than my legs can take me. Running far, farther than the bow. I don't know how much longer than my heart can take this. Don't know why, don't know the reason why. Something about just letting yourself go and, and let the river take you. And that's what body surfing in a river is, as opposed to being in the ocean. You kind of just let the river take you, and there's something so amazing about that. You know, you just feel in the water go by you so fast, and just the sensory things that happen with that. And, you know, you're going so fast that your huevos are hydroplaning. You know, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling, and that, you know, that. It's hard to explain to anyone when they ask you why you like to do it, but that's why I like to do it. Hey, tell me a story, Bo. Once upon a time... There was a boy named Bo. And Bo wanted to go to the beach. He said, Dad, please, Dad, take me to... Beach. Which beach did he want to go to? Makapu Beach. Yeah. Why did Bo want to go to Makapu Beach? And I wanted to swim. Yeah, he wanted to swim. And when Bo and Dad got to Makapu okay. Beach, the waves were really big. Was Bo scared? Yeah. Did he want to swim anyway? Yeah. 
What happened? They swam out under the big waves. Don't cry. Don't cry, Bo. Don't be scared. I love you, Bo. My name is Don King. My dad taught me how to body surf here. Now I bring my son here and he's learning to body surf with me. Bo is our youngest and Bo has autism. One of the neat things about Bo is, is how comfortable he is in the water and how much he likes it. And, and so when I go in the water with Bo for a while, I can just play with him and just forget about all the problems of autism and just me and him. People around the world love swimming, whether it's in a pool, a lake, a pond, or in the ocean. It's gone on for hundreds, if not thousands of years, playing in the ocean energy. It's hard for me to even verbalize after all these years. It's just getting into the ocean and having fun. It's just that simple, really. One of the best things I like about body surfing, it's a really different experience to have nothing between you and the wave. That's what makes it different than anything else is it just seems there's more of a connection to the ocean being in it rather than being on it. You know it definitely gives you a better understanding of the wave break and how different energies are moving through the ocean and through the break itself. It's the ultimate form of playing with mother nature. You're totally in the elements. It's just such a raw form of, of entertainment. You know, there's no media involved, there's nothing. And I love it so much because of that. My dad took me to Sandy's for the first time. And ever since that first barrel, I became a barrel addict. I've been doing it every day since. You run a comb all through your hair And stone road signs will never stare The damn if the right and the damn if they're wrong They don't mind In the doldrums of each new day, to dance in the doldrums of come and pay, to dance in the doldrums that keep you from this divide. This man, we exactly way home. You know, kind of as a teenager, it was a long time ago, but I remember very clearly just sitting on the beach, just going, 
This is as clean and beautiful and real and meaningful to me as anything in the world. And if it's giving me pleasure, it's making me happy, why shouldn't I continue to do this as long as I can? Years and years of experience at Pipeline, and I'm still really anxious about going to Chopu. I've been seeing pictures of it for as long as pictures have been around. You know, people have been telling me for years, yeah, you can body surf it, yeah, you can make some. So they've been building up my anticipation to see this way for many, many years.
Well, it's been ten years and a thousand tears. Look at the mess I'm in. Broken nose and a broken heart. Empty bottle of gin. Well, I sit and I pray in my broken down Chevrolet while I'm singing to myself. There's gotta be another way. I'm Lewis Bradshaw the fifth. I'm a competing strongman and a wedge body surfer. Yes. Take away, take away this ball and chain. Well, I'm searched and I'm searched. I'm the perfect life. Sting it! Brand new car and a brand new suit. I even got me a little wife. But wherever I have gone, I'm sure if you find myself there, you can run all your life. But you can't go anywhere. Take away, take away, take away this ball and chain. I'm sick and I'm tired. I can't take any more pain. Take away, take away, never to return again. I'm lonely and I'm tired. I can't take any more pain. Take away, take away, never to return again. Lonely and I'm tired, and I can't take any more pain.